Welcome back. China is all set to elect its next leader in the 20th Congress meet of the ruling Communist Party today. With little opposition, current Chinese President Xi Jinping is expected to secure a third leadership term. The 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China is seen as a significant conference held at a critical moment. The conference will plan out the goals, tasks and major policies for the party and country's future development and has drawn the attention of the international community. Meanwhile, Beijing is on high alert after rare protests denouncing Jinping took over the capital and Chinese social media. The protests also slammed Jinping for his stringent COVID-19 policies. Our managing editor Zaka Jacob takes you through the pro entire process of CCP from decisions to be taken to future roadmap. Take a look. On the 16th of October this year, China's governing Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, will begin its 20th Party Congress. Now, this is a once-in-five-year exercise when there is endorsement as well as review of the party and government's work and charting the way ahead. But once every 10 years, the Party Congress meets to elect a new leadership. And that's been the case since 1987 when Deng Xiaoping became the leader of the Communist Party and the President of the People's Republic of China. But this year's Party Congress is going to be different. There will not be a change of leadership. Instead, there will be an endorsement of Xi Jinping's rule and the Supreme Leader of China is expected to secure an unprecedented third term. Now, most Party Congresses last about a week or so typically and so it will be this year. The current Congress completes its five-year term. More than 2,000 members of the Party Congress will take part in the selection of new blood for the party's Central Committee. The Central Committee has more than 200 full-time members and about 170 alternate members. Together, these 350-plus members will decide the future leaders of China. Some of the Central Committee members will be promoted to the 25-member Politburo. There will also be likely some new faces in the seven-member Politburo Standing Committee or the PSC, which is the party's most powerful organ, the highest decision-making body within the Chinese Communist Party. So the question is, who is going to make the cut and who will not? Is a third term guaranteed for Xi Jinping? Where does this leave him in the pantheon of Chinese leaders since Mao Zedong? What changes can we expect in the Politburo Standing Committee? And perhaps the most important question, will China get a new premier? Because Li Keqiang may be on his way out. Now, when we talk about succession in the Politburo Standing Committee, we should not conflate and treat all the candidates the same, but separate them into three groups because they enjoy different levels of privileges. Sitting Politburo Standing Committee members enjoy more privileges than who are aspiring candidates from the outside because of the Standing Committee rules. A Standing Committee member enjoys extendable tenure unless he or she, and in this current case, there are no women in the Politburo Standing Committee, so if he gets unseated either through disciplinary procedure or voluntarily retires or, has, as has happened most often in the last few decades, the candidate is above the cutoff age of 67. Now, going above the age limit is currently the only operating mechanism that regulates the exits of senior members of the Communist Party. Hence, it's very valuable to keep it alive for the operation of the party to avoid a, some kind of a geriatric leadership. All sitting PSC members above the age of 67 at the time of the election are forced to retire. All those who are at 67 or below will stay and there's been no exception to this over the last 30 years. There are cases where age-qualified Politburo members have failed to retain their seats. But that is an aberration and that doesn't necessarily contradict the age limit rule because they don't have the privilege of Politburo Standing Committee members and age is not the only factor that regulates the exits of these members. Consent engineering. This is what happens at the voting sites and it's perhaps the more impactful measures but least ensure predictable outcomes at the Party Congress. Now the Standing Committee of the Chairman League of Party Congress, which is SCOCL, that is the official collective body which approves the nominations of Central Committee members. 
The SCOCL has about 40 members, but it's not a fixed size. Regular members of this group are comprised of sitting members of the Politburo, the Politburo Standing Committee, and the Central Secretariat. Since 2002, all living, retired, and not purged Standing Committee members have also been part of the SCOCL. Now, this mechanism of allowing retiring as well as retired Politburo Standing Committee members to have a say in the selection of future leaders is perhaps the secret sauce behind the peaceful power succession that we have seen widely over the last 30 to 40 years from Deng Xiaoping to Jiang Zemin to Hu Jintao and now to Xi Jinping.